What about announcements? Who has anything that they'd like to share with the group that has something to do with social media, online marketing, something that can help us grow our business? Kat. <laughs> yeah, so I teach classes on WordPress at Sierra Commons, downtown Nevada City. And so I have a class coming up this Friday and there's two spots left. And what I'm going to be teaching in this class is how to protect your site from hacks and what to do if your site gets hacked. This is WordPress specific. Um, also, how to set your site up for success in terms of using the right permalink structure, setting up your core settings, backing up, and updating your site. So it's, it's called Set Your Site Up for Success. It's this Friday at Sierra Commons, and my website is becomeawebweaver.com. Nice. Uh, real quick, I want to give a quick testimonial <laughs> to that. Um, my wife and a friend of hers are starting looking to start a business, kind of a blog type of business, and they actually sought out CAT. And so they've got kind of a quick uh, precursor on what to do as far as setting up a WordPress and what to do, what not to do as far as security. And my wife came home all excited, and she's like, so let me look in your admin on your, your site. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, oh my gosh, you know, you got to change this and change this. It's like, you know, you're a sitting duck for hackers. <laughs> you know, I was like, ooh, pick me, pick me. So <laughs> um, I'm kind of sitting here vulnerable and nervous all at the same time, like waiting to, you know, see my website get crashed somehow. But um, created an awareness on my part, so I'll probably be calling you and using your services to help get that protected. So. Susie. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sierra Commons is celebrating their third anniversary, so after this meeting, you can just go here and get some cake, and Brian's probably going. Oh, yes, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> and then um, I also wanted to mention that um, if you guys don't know about Pat, who's never heard of Passion into Action? You're done. Okay, so <laughs> the, I Say think more. that Elise is doing a really good job of using social media to let people know she just did a little video, and um, every couple of days she's she's putting out something, and it's an it's an <coughs> event for most of her women, and they're bringing very good national speakers. I mean, the top level national speakers and local speakers. I'm one of them. Um, in Grass Valley on the 12th through the 14th, downtown Grass Valley. So. Um, and Holly Mears is cool. going to be. Holly Mears, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of really excellent women speakers. So for women, our men allowed, of course. Susie, you year. just heard a customer say he wants a men's equipment. <laughs> you do it. No, I'll let you do. You've got the expertise. <laughs> I'm just a voice. <laughs> hey, Brian, you had your appearance. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, okay. Barry has something. And Barry has something, Barry has something to announce. What do I have? <laughs> There's some class There's coming, up. coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a great opportunity, Barry. <laughs> <Mary. laughs> At uh, Sierra Commons 1022 yeah. for eight Monday nights. I'm going to teach how to just. I. I well, gosh, where do I start? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I just walked through the door and Andrew pointed to me. He does that. Come on. I uh, teach online uh, classes to entertainers all over the world. I have these programs. I've been in entertainment for 30 years. I teach in the business and show business. And at Sierra Commons, I'm going to teach how I've taken all my knowledge and expertise in that field and put it into online programs, which are kicking butt. So, so anybody who wants to launch an online yeah. course or product. If you have some expertise in, in uh, anything, you know, knitting, pool chemicals, uh, really whatever. <laughs> there's, uh, if there's a, a, global, a global audience for something, it's, uh, it's been incredible over the last four years to take what I know about booking a silly juggling act for a lot of money and uh, teaching it to people around the world. It's been great. Because no one in Nevada County wanted more than that. <laughs> is, is, should, should we go to Sierra Commons site? Yeah, it's site? on Sierra Commons site. It's called Your Biz Blueprint. And it's just about your biz. You, whatever you want to do, yourbizblueprint.com has some videos about it. Um, and Sierra Commons has some information about it. Yeah. Should be awesome. Very good. We could have rehearsed that. <laughs> <laughs> you need the elevator speech. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes? No? Okay. Joey. I've got a win. Um, I've been using the power of constant contact to just run campaigns and really just use existing clients to reach out to other people who they think might be interested in different programs I offer. And I kind of just launched the first campaign and have 40 people signed up for it for a new event that's going to start um, pretty soon. So that was kind of the first one and a lot of success with just 
shooting that information out to people who are already in the door, who are already liking what I offer them, and having them work um, to bring other people in. So that's awesome. the lining fruit right there, right? It's always easy to get the first kiss, and then we don't, or it's not too easy to get the first kiss, and we don't put any effort into getting the easy one, the second one. So good for you on going right back into your existing client base. That's huge. Anyone else? How do you get the first kiss? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. Please talk to Machen after the presentation. <laughs> My three hours <laughs> early. Corian, can I introduce you to um, introduce mm -hmm. our speaker? Because I'm also the impromptu camera person today. I'll take your spot because you're on the camera. <laughs> uh, let me do an announcement first because I tack these together. I am teaching classes at Placer School for Adults. Uh, I really recommend my introduction to internet marketing class. It's five classes, so it's starting October 17th and running through November. 6.30 to 9.30 in the evening in Auburn. It is the best bang for your buck for learning everything I've got to offer about internet marketing, web design, search marketing, uh, so many different areas that I can get into. Uh, and it's really inexpensive. It's like 100 bucks, so it's about the best way you can be able to learn this stuff for your website. Uh, I also am teaching a LinkedIn Facebook class in November, and I will announce that later. Another announcement, uh, next month's meetup is Brenda Horton talking about Pinterest. So Brenda Horton, the founder of Nevada County Online Business Strategies Group, which is now, thankfully, Nevada County Online, <laughs> uh, is coming back to build on what we're going to be hearing today from Tony Orba and Kelly Phoenix from Batteries for Less. Let me explain a little bit more about you guys. Uh, batteries for Less is my company. Uh, started in 1999, we sell batteries online. Through most of the time, it was all cell phone batteries and accessories. Uh, about three and a half years ago, I hired Tony Yorba as a overqualified Nevada County resident who was coming off of a vice president position at a company called National Shopping Service. At National Shopping Service, he had really built that company as a mystery shopping service to go out to franchises and chains and mainly large businesses and test their products, test their wares, be a customer, and then bring back feedback. And that's one of the approaches he really brought to Batteries for Less, not only having a wide experience of internet marketing, but knowing how to put the customer first and how to continue all the things we've done really well. And under his leadership as the president of Batteries for Less, we've expanded into many different product lines. So we now carry digital camera batteries and laptop batteries and even iPad accessories and iPhone accessories. We've really grown a lot. And now that I'm the speaking coordinator uh, for NCO, I wanted to do case studies. We've seen a few of those. This is one that I've been waiting to see myself because I don't have to do that much stuff at Batteries for Less anymore. Uh, it's one of the real things that Tony has brought to the table to do a lot there. And part of that is Kelly Phoenix, who is our business coordinator and specialist in internet marketing. She is our face on social media marketing. She's the one that's responding to people on Facebook and Pinterest and Squidoo and Yahoo questions and answers and all these other places that both build the reputation that matters to Google to give us better ranking, as well as develops that relationship with our customers and puts them first. So I'd like to introduce Tony Orba. And Kelly will be getting up soon. I'll imagine. start off okay. first. And thank you. Thanks, Corian. He's one of my biggest fans. Um, Not the only one. Yeah. So just to follow up, too, is I was at the uh, meeting a month ago, and it was on uh, the meetup was, I think the topic was social media. And so I don't want to, like, be too redundant. Um, you know, I think most of us are aware of kind of the basic premise behind social media, et cetera, um, and, and how it kind of is a, I guess it's the new public relations, if you will, along with the fact that it's a great link building tool, it's a great way to generate traffic, generate sales, et cetera. Um, so we're not gonna get too much into that, um, but we are gonna touch on uh, a few different marketing channels that we use beyond Facebook and Twitter. And kind of try to put that into context um, in our, as far as our overall marketing strategy goes. So um, I'm not going to be working on this too much. That's, I'm going to reserve the, the PowerPoint part of it for uh, 
Kelly's part of the presentation, and I'm going to kind of just give some insight as to what we do at Batteries for Less. Um, now, a little bit more of my background first. In Corian touched on National Shopping Service. Um, that was a big part of my career. Um, what I really learned in that was really, uh, I learned about data and I learned about statistical analysis and large numbers and everything. And that's really uh, transferred into my internet marketing career because it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of <clears throat> data. It's a lot of trying to find actionable data within you know, this huge pile of data that you find. Um, so I'm assuming everyone here has a website or most people, how many people actually use Google Analytics on a regular basis? Okay. <clears throat> so now, if I get into more about describing like what we do at Batteries for Less, I want you all to keep in mind that Google Analytics is our most, probably the most powerful tool that we have at our fingertips. It's a free tool. It's completely free. You don't even need to sign up for a Google account to use it. You can use any email address to use Google Analytics. Um, but the being able to analyze that data and analyze the traffic on your website is really going to give you an advantage and many times over your competition and also it's going to help you to kind of focus your energy and your resources in areas <coughs> that actually matter. Okay. Now, um, a quick background on uh, batteries for less. Well, we are, let's say, small time, okay? Now, I wish we were a lot bigger. Um, we're, working on, we're working on that. But we're small <laughs> time um, in the big scheme of things, in the big global internet. Uh, we focus primarily on the United States. Um, all of our marketing efforts, uh, especially any paid marketing efforts, are all focused on the U.S. only. Now, we still get orders from all different countries. But we don't waste our time and our effort trying to market and we don't spend any money marketing to, to other countries. But within the US, okay, we're small change. So we compete daily for search engine rankings that essentially keep us alive. Now, that's our focus is is, is focusing on our search engine rankings because that's a free form of advertising. In other words, we don't have to keep paying for that. We do pay for click ads and all that, but that free form of advertising is, is our bread and butter, okay? I mean, it's, it's everything to us. Now, on our website, we are generating, again, chunk change, but you know, we get probably in the neighborhood of 150,000 visitors a month, okay? Um, out of those, I think it's like 82% of them are new users. So that would leave the other 18% uh, or so, 17, 18% are returning visitors. So obviously both of those are significant. I mean the 82 stands out, but the returning visitors also stands out um, as a significant number um, of people that we need to accommodate, we need to address and kind of try to segment them out the best we can. Our, um, on Google, I'm going to mostly talk about Google because Google, the most recent data I could find, which is this month's data, or the last, <clears throat> last month's data, August, yeah, uh, Google was back up to 85% of the market share, search engine market share. So, you know, we've seen uh, Bing and Yahoo make some progress and kind of regain some of their ground, but it's back, you know, 85%. That's in the U.S. If you look at internationally, the Google's market share is like 83% versus 85 in the US. So most of everything I'm going to talk about here is going to be about Google. Where we have uh, for batteriesforless.com, again, a small company compared to our competitors. We have three over 300,000, basically 365,000 pages indexed in Google. Wait, that is 365,000? 365,000 pages indexed in Google. Now, we only have roughly 2,000 active SKUs. So again, we're chunk change. A lot of our competition, they have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of products that they're marketing through their website. We have a couple thousand. So we're adding to that. 
Now, those 365,000 pages, obviously, where we can't, we can't give the same amount of resources to each one of those. We really have to kind of, kind of narrow down what our focus is. And so the way it kind of pans out is, of those 365,000, or for those 365,000 pages, those are coming up in roughly, where's my number? Two million in search queries every month. And we have 10,000, it's over 10,000 separate search phrases that we're ranking in those pages. Mm -hmm. Now out of those 10,000 search phrases, we have 3,100 different search phrases that were on the front page on Google, 3,100. Now of those, we only have 200 or so that we could say that we average number one. So you know, starting with 365,000 pages sounds really great, but it kind of boils down. You get down to 200 pages that were really competing you know, for number one position, um, 3,000 that were competing for the front page, many of which get very little traffic. So you know, maybe they get five searches a month or something like that. They're still going to show up in our statistics. Out of all that, we generate roughly 5,100 to 5,200 on average orders every month. And we do that with a crew of about, a full-time crew of about eight people right now. We have 11 to 12 employees. Uh, now, so the point of, of me saying all this is to kind of put the social media into context. Now, Google's 85% of of search engine usage is done on Google. Okay, now, we only get 42% of our traffic from Google Organic. That means 58% of our traffic comes from other places. So now people may ask, is social media, does it work? Is it worth it? Uh, you, know, you, you can be the judge of that, but my challenge is I gotta make up that other 58% of our traffic. If I relied on just Google Organic, I mean, we'd be out of business. So we use all different means to generate traffic to our website. And you know, social media, and that's a very general term, is just one of those. But we use uh, email marketing. So we use that on a regular basis. We have roughly 100,000 people that we email to four times a week consistently. Uh, we have a, we use pay-per-click, where we spend $25,000 a month on average on pay-per-click advertising. Uh, with that pay-per-click, there's a lot of subcategories within pay-per-click, like display advertising, or one of the really cool new features Google offers now, which is the remarketing. I don't know if anyone's used that, the remarketing. It allows you to retarget and remarket to people that visit your website whether they, and you can choose if you want people that visited and made a purchase or people that visited and didn't make a purchase. Uh, we have people that have visited our site, visited our site and did not make a purchase. In other words, that group of people that we're remarketing to right now is roughly 370,000 people. So in the last six months, people that came to our site didn't make a purchase and now they're being followed by our banners all over Google. And not just Google, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, a number of different websites all over the internet. So our ads through our remarketing, we can, you know, we average probably 5,000 ad impressions every day. How uh, do you do that? How do you, how do you get track that? I didn't know you could do that. Through the remarketing? Yeah. It, you, have to be, you have to be an AdWords user. So if you're using AdWords, okay. um, then through... I believe the networks tab, you can start, you first uh, uh, develop an audience, and that's as simple as marketing, a cert, give them a certain page and say, anybody that visits this page now is part of this audience. Okay. And so, and I can, I'll, I'll explain more if we have time, or afterwards feel free and I can uh, expand on that a little bit. We also use, on a regular basis, because again, we're trying to produce 58% of our traffic, um, we use shopping comparison sites, which are primarily used by people or, or companies that sell products. 
So, um, and that's where you can list your product feeds with uh, companies like Shopping.com and Price Grabber and Next Tag and Shopzilla and, and we use all those and more. Um, coupon sites is another thing that we use and, and can actually be used for um, retailers or service companies, either one. Those are we get uh, consistent flow of traffic, consistent flow of orders from those. And then of course, there's other uh, marketing channels and sub-channels, and of course we also market locally. So we have a local storefront. But we also compete locally in every single city where there's a Batteries Plus. So every, ci every city that has a Batteries Plus, there are competition locally, because we don't want people to go down the street, we want them to go online and buy a battery from us. So, there's a lot of different ways that we have to generate our traffic. So social media, for us, yeah, it's extremely valuable to us. Because it's another tool, it's a tool that, that we can use that kind of bridges the gap between a lot of our separate marketing channels. So most of the different marketing channels that I mentioned all have social media buttons, all have ways that you can share or that you can pin or that you can tweet or you can do whatever you want to do and kind of tie everything together. Um, another big part of our social part, uh, strategy are several blogs that we have, probably a dozen different other websites that we run to support our, our main retail website. Mm -hmm. And those also integrate into all these other marketing channels, or most of them, not like our pay-per-click. We don't pay to advertise our blog. Um, but, you know, like coupon sites and other social bookmarking sites that we utilize, like stumble upon, for instance. Those work better with a blog than they do with a, a direct retail site. Like you can only use it occasionally for your retail site, but you can use it more and more often for your blog, kind of piggyback off that to get traffic to your website. So almost everything that we do has, you know, can tie into social media. And so social media becomes a big part of any, any company that's serious about marketing on the internet, it has to be a part of your approach. In our email marketing, we want people to share it on Facebook. You know, we want people to, we try to entice people, we, we have a certain segment of our product line that's focused on interesting products and things that people would share. People that want to pin on Pinterest, etc. Which we'll get into more. Or Kelly will get into more. Um, now, batteries for less, you know, with all these marketing channels, I'd love to take the whole day and talk about each one independently. And I hope to have the opportunity to expand a little bit more on some of, the, some of these marketing channels and some opportunities for different types of businesses that uh, you know, may be available out there. So afterwards, feel free, um, I'll be available to talk. But most of the talk that we're gonna do is gonna be focused, um, Kelly's gonna be focusing on just a, a, hand, a small little sliver of what's out there and what's available. For every, every industry that you're in, you're going to find you know, more interest on certain websites than on other websites. Um, and, and to explain, a lot of it is demographic based. So now batteries for less, 53% of our traffic is male and 47% is female. So that's roughly 50-50. It's we're like half and half. But <clears throat> with all the information that's available now out there as far as what uh, a visitor to a certain website looks like, all the demographic information and interest groups and interest information that's available out there, for pretty much every business, there's dozens probably of good websites, good opportunities to kind of expand your exposure, increase conversions, increase traffic to your website, whatever you're trying to accomplish, increase the needs. So these are some of the things that work for us. And these are just some of the dozens of websites that, that Kelly manages for us and as our business development coordinator. Um, there's a lot more um, out there that we could do. We try to limit those that are most effective. So we look at things like traffic. We look at things like demographics. We look at different things that impact our you know our business and our conversion rate so you know there's times when we can get instantly in a day by doing the right blog post we could see a bump of hundreds of people come to our website or come to a blog post or something we did 
that no one makes a purchase. Or we could go out and we could buy a bunch of Facebook fans, but most of the fans that we, yet you, that we can purchase that are affordable are all in a very young demographic. But we know that the demographic on our web, you know, for our website is 40% is between 35 and 54. And 17% is between 25 and 34. So 40, I'm sorry, 57% of our traffic is between the ages of 25 and 54. So we don't want to waste too much of our time with you know, the typical Facebook fan, let's say. So rather we try to find interests that we can relate to. So what, it could be information about battery life for a cell phone for us, or the most unique iPhone case, or you know we've gone into our product base and tried to find everything pink and everything purple, and use that and kind of group that together and try to focus, you know, focus, try to target those people that are purple lovers. So for every company, there's different opportunities. Um, one other thing, I might not have a chance to say this at the end, is one of the, I think, keys also to our strategy is we really kind of look to other companies and we emulate. So when we compete every day and all these thousands of search phrases, are, our main competitors are Amazon, Best Buy, um, and then a couple industry specific, like for cell phone stuff, it's all cellphoneshop.net. For laptop batteries, it's laptops for less. <laughs> oh, I can't stand them. <laughs> <laughs> but for um, <laughs> in, in competing with these big companies, and, and I got to get back on my train of thought there, so I did lose it a little bit. Um, and, yeah, well, we I always and yeah. I always tell my team, watch what the other guys do. Watch what the people do that spent millions of dollars in research in measuring what works better, what kind of button works better, or how often you should send emails, or whatever the case may be. So I, I like to call it mentor companies, and I've always used these my whole career, which is find the companies that are really doing things I like and kind of mentor them. So for us, it's Tiger Direct, okay? I'm just kind of gave away a secret. But we're like every day watching what Tiger Direct is doing. Every day we're like, you know, we're signed up on their email lists. We're following them on Twitter. Or we're doing everything. And so a lot of times they'll give us an idea. We'll immediately the same day kind of rewrite it, make it ours, and, and do our version of it. Because we know that they have a lot more people working on it. <coughs> and, uh, and when we go into other websites like Pinterest and some of the other ones that we're going to follow, uh, that we're going to talk about, it's the same thing. So we go into Pinterest and we go, hey, what's Best Buy doing? What's Tiger Direct doing? And we, that's how we figure out what we do. We take the best of what everyone else is doing. And so we emulate our competition, but also it doesn't have to be direct competitors. It could be somebody in a semi-related business. So electronics, for instance, it's not cell phone batteries. But it, you know, it can be uh, an online-focused company, because we're an online-focused company. So I'll look at what another online-focused company is doing. So I highly recommend with, when you leave this, pre, uh, this presentation that you kind of really you know, think about that part of it and think about you know, who, who could you watch, who could you emulate, who do you want to be like online? You know, like, what would you like to have? Like, uh, you want to have 5,000 followers on Facebook or do you want to be, have a really strong presence on really uh, credible uh, questions and answers for them? So, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about here. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce Kelly Phoenix, who's going to have a play and take up too much of your time. She's going to talk about, uh, again, part of her job at Batteries for Less. She's our business development coordinator, and she is an awesome uh, knowledge base for internet marketing and link building and anything that has to do with, uh, and not to mention beyond, and often, yeah. public relations and everything. So take it away, Kelly. Batteries for Less as starting as an internet marketing assistant. I moved there, I recognize a few of you. I worked at the union for a few years in advertising there. Um, so today we're going beyond Facebook and Twitter. These are social networking sites. We're going to talk about three different types of other social media sites that you can use to drive traffic to your site. And 
build links. So the first type of site are social photo, photo sharing sites. Like the most popular right now would obviously be Pinterest, um, Instagram, Photo Bucket, Flickr. We're going to talk about Pinterest. Um, Q&A sites are sites where people can go on, ask questions. You can go on, search questions, and then answer questions related to your field. Um, it, again, it helps drive traffic to your site and builds links to your website. There's other sites like Askville at Amazon.com, Answerbag, Florida, and AOL Answers. The next type of sites we're going to talk about are user-generated micro-sites, which we're going to talk about Squidoo.com, um, Hubpages, Tumblr, Gather, WikiHow. Basically, you create an account on these websites and then you can create your own mini websites related to specific subjects. And you can create as many as you would like. For free. For free. Keyword. Okay. So first we'll talk about Pinterest. It's the third most popular social networking site at the moment. Um, it's getting over 20 million unique visitors. Unique people are visiting that site every month. Um, it's getting over 100 million monthly visits. So on average, it, I'd say that maybe each monthly visitor is visiting about five times a month. Their Alexa traffic rating is 38, so it's the 38 most visited site. Uh, I'm not sure. It is the world. I think it's the world. Yeah. Alexa gives you both global and US, I think. Um, as far as the demographics, um, so the last time that they did the research, it was about 80% of Pinterest users are women, 30% um, of the users are between the ages of 35 and 44. This is the biggest segment of users. Um, this number is starting to go down. More men are starting to use Pinterest. So I saw some reports of maybe 65% women, 35% men. Okay. Can you catch you Yeah, they are. So basically, for each of these sites, I'm going to go through just kind of basic how-to of some of the general functions of the website. And then after, I'll give some tips and tricks, um, some extra things that you can do um, to use the site really efficiently. Um, so first, of course, with Pinterest, um, okay, so this is um, what Pinterest looks like when you go and you haven't signed up. So obviously you would want to create an account. You can create an account using an email, connecting it to your Facebook or your Twitter page. you create the account, um, let me sign in to my <laughs> it is a good point though, like when you are working on these sites, it's like, you know, you have to be upfront oh. about what your purpose is. So don't like, you know, be a, a, a spammer, let's say, and like really go overboard. Too, sa too much salesmanship on most social sites will get you banned or deemed penalized in some way. So you do have to keep that in mind. Okay, I apologize. Just give me one more moment. Pinterest accounts, so I just need to. Sure. I have a question while she's doing this. I get frustrated with Pinterest on my iPad because it's it's so awful. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, well, how could they create a a such a viable thing and not make it good on mobile? What is that about? Anybody know? Um, I don't know. They may be switching. Like some companies, when you look at a, their website through a tablet they switch to their mobile version, and other companies keep you on their other version. It's and just not awful. It's, just, it's not this usable. Is an app. Oh, it's an app? Yeah. Or that, I don't yeah. know. That's their, it's, that's it's their like problem. Excuse. You know, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just it not really usable. Isn't. If you even look at the Facebook app, though, it's not that impressive, to be honest. No. It's slow, Same it's buggy, thing. and they've had all this time to create sure. it. So I think Pinterest, they're, co they're continuously like updating and adding to their site. And so it's kind of, it's so true, Facebook yeah. doesn't either. 
So once you create your account, if you sign in, this is the page that you land on. Um, the first thing I would suggest that you do would be to fill out your profile information. And the way that you do that is you go up here to your, this is the username basically of your account, and down the settings. Okay. So the username, <coughs> that becomes your Pinterest URL, uh, Pinterest.com slash batteries for less is your URL. The um, about is, that is going to show up on your profile page, so I suggest, you know, trying to use any keyword terms related to your business in that description, include maybe a phone number if you would like. This is kind of a basic overview of your account. Okay. Um, you can put a, a link to your site, so there, that's a good link building opportunity. And then upload an image. Um, the image would be um, 165 by 165 pixels. Is that Corian? <laughs> that's, that's, that's Robbie the robot. And the setup is very I mean, easy, and you know, obviously, with so many different marketing channels, like we have to really, you know, we can't spend all day on any one of them. So, all these are already kind of pretty easy. Like, everything's free, um, and you know, a main is something that kind of goes the same for each one, which is really trying to be keyword rich. Yeah. Um, description. You know, you're best off if you have, uh, you know, one of your keywords and a couple of your keywords in the name of your business because if you can legitimately put it as your, make it part of your URL for Pinterest. Um, although, again, you know, there are probably cases where you could put some keywords in there. But if you put, if you're obviously just keyword stuffing the name of your page, usually that would just be your band. So. Uh, you want it to make sense, you know, yeah. and like reading what you wish, but makes sense. Um, okay, so once you do the description, I'm just, now a lot of you probably know some of this and I apologize if I'm telling you things you already know. But the first thing that I was just doing after you fill out your description is you wanna find categories that you're interested in or categories that are related to your business, okay? Because once you do that, um, basically by following categories, you'll have, um, okay, You'll have a lot of different ideas on different pins. These are pins um, that you can repin or share. Um, so I would follow um, categories that you're interested in and related to your business. What does it mean specifically to repin? To what? To repin. To repin? I'm going to go for that. Okay. Okay, so um, up here, so there's following and categories. Following is different. Following is when you're through Pinterest and you see somebody that you really like with their pinning, you can actually follow them kind of like you're following on Twitter or you're following a Facebook page. So if you go to your following link, then you see all of the people's pins that you've been following. And that's another way to get um, related content to share with people that are following you on Pinterest. Um, well, they okay. may give you an idea, like for instance, like we have cell phone accessories and in a lot of our marketing channels, we don't market them as cell phone accessories, we market them, let's say, as vehicle accessories. Mm -hmm. So we're an automobile accessories as a category. And so there's a lot, you know, you can, I would highly recommend looking through product categories and really thinking about each one. Mm -hmm. And you know, say, what can I apply to this category in my business? Because the category, that category is also going to be, when you create a board itself, you're going to pick one of those categories. You could actually create two of the same exact boards and just put them in different categories, depending on who you're trying to target. Um, so one thing that I do when I'm looking to, like I created a board for St. Patrick's Day. I know it's not that much involved with batteries, but I thought, <laughs> we have some green cases, we have some green headsets, let me put some recipes in there. So one that I did was a St. Patrick's Day board. Anything pink? Not the St. Patrick's Day, but I do have a board that's um, phone fashions, so it's, well, it's kind of geared towards women, so I have that board that I created. Um, so this is the St. Patty's Day 2012. Um, a lot of people liked, I had one post on here that um, 43 people repinned it, this, that recipe for the cabbage and corn beef. So, so that means that 43 people actually saw our name, they saw our brand, they saw our logo, and even if it's about corned beef and cabbage, they still were, I mean, we made an impression on it, basically. Okay. So how I found things to go into this board was I did a search. 
I typed in St. Patrick's Day. Another thing you can do, I have iPhone accessory boards, so I go to iPhone 4. Okay. Now, what this is doing, see how it's defaulting to, to the pins? These are all pins that are in, include iPhone 4 in the pin name. Okay. But if I want to search boards, boards are like the bigger picture. Think of a board as a, like a bulletin board, and pins are like all your little papers that you're painting on it. So the board is, um, so you can search by boards. These are boards that have to do with iPhone 4. And then these are, if, and if you want to look for people, these are people that have iPhone 4 in the description of their profile. Okay? So let's see. So creating a board. So when you want to create a board, you would go up here to add. And you're going to create a board. Um, the iPhone 5 is coming out, right? So I just went and got a couple of boards with the iPhone 5. Oh, well, it's out. Sorry. Um, so the board name, that is important to optimize. And the reason is, is when someone goes to your board, it's whatever you name the board is in your URL. Mm -hmm. And if you can have keyword terms in your URL, that URL is going to have better ranking um, through Google. So I would name maybe like iPhone 5 batteries and accessories. So the board URL would be Pinterest.com slash iPhone 5 batteries and accessories. So then you would categorize. You can also, if you have other people that you want to be able to pin to your board, you can enter, give them permission. So then you can create the board. Got a question? Yes. Do you have a relationship with um, Apple where they'll give you advance notice so you can build this board ahead of time? or? Oh, you, well, you mean the for like the name of what they were going to name the device? or No, like a, the batteries being used or headphones or whatever. So you want to build your pages. Right. Will they give you advanced information so you can do that or are you following after that? I don't believe so. What I would do um, is one of the, my jobs at Batteries for Less is to do research on all the newest phones that are coming out by HTC, Samsung. So as soon as I see that a new phone is coming out, even if we haven't added any accessories or batteries to our website, I would then go and create a board to have that URL. Does we do that, have does to, that answer the question? We do yeah. try to, we have to try to be ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. and, and so when like the 4S came out, a lot of people thought it was going to be the iPhone 5, and so did we. And so back then we bought a bunch of domains and things, set up you know, microsites with iPhone 5 in them. So, but we're always guessing and we're trying to see if any information leaked so we know which cases are compatible, etc. So we can focus social, but also so we can be the first one with a page online mm -hmm. on our website. Even if we don't website. have products to, it's still there. It's still, no. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so uh, once you create the board, you can <coughs> optimize the board. This is an idea I had to um, make a board specific to the most popular phone series that we sell batteries for. So. I did about six boards for like HTC, six for Samsung. So just as an example, I went in and added um, any accessories and batteries that go with the HTC Sensation. So mm -hmm. say somebody has a Sensation, they can go in and follow this board, and they can repin anything that they might be interested in. Um, can Kelsey? I ask a question? Yeah. If you click on on one of your images, does it take the, take them to your site? Okay. Not from here. But if you go in, oops, if you go into the actual pin itself, and then this is kind of like this is the detail page of what you just pinned. Then if you click on it, it takes it to the website. Okay. It takes it to that specific page that you pinned that particular photo off. Okay, Kelly, is that? Are those all inbound links to that site? Yes, that's one, and that's one of the things I'm going to go over for each of these sites is that we get links for um, all of these sites. Oh. Um, they, I think most of them are no follow links, but I personally think that they still have a lot of value. Um, so we, I'll show you the different types of links. That we can What's a no follow link? Um, it's basically telling Google not not to count that. Link. It's like telling Google not to crawl that. Mm -hmm. It's not the past page or include that. Right. Okay. So, um, as you can see up in the URL, it's, can you see that? Can I, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. So, that same thing, these are 
are all products that you have on your website. Right. Right. All right. What if you were using products that you have on your Facebook page? Well, can you do the same thing? And if you click on it, will it go back to that mm -hmm. source as yeah, well? Yeah, exactly. When you pin something from the, a specific web page, mm -hmm. it's always going to lead back to that exact page. Okay. Mm. Wherever you get. And we really, we try to participate, if you will. So we build boards, like here, we have a lot of products I see, and I think most of those are probably products we carry on our website. They're all products that we carry. Where the St. Patrick's Day one was St. Patrick's Day themed. So she actually is posting products that she's interested in, or that are, you know, all green, so they're related in that way. Uh, but they're not all on our website. So now if you just go and create boards and you're constantly linking to your website, just yours. you're just you you're just kind of you're you're not using the this platform the way it was intended to be used, which is to be social, people to participate in those both ways. Mm -hmm. Now I have seen though, these boards come up high in the search engine rankings. It's the actual Pinterest board. Mm -hmm. So I could be looking, you know, researching a specific phrase like cool iPhone 4 cases. And, and I look in Google and on the front page there's a Pinterest board who, that somebody, you know, built. so, you know, definitely, definitely powerful tool. And, you know, with Pinterest getting so much traffic and the fact that it's all free, it's something that's really hard to pass up. So, does it work for services as well as product? I can get, I get the product. There, there are ways that you can make it work. You have to kind of be creative and if, if you have a certain service that you offer and you want an idea on how you could use Pinterest, I could give you some ideas. How long did it take you to make this, this a board? This one say, board? Or like your St. Patrick's Day board? Um, that took me about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, is that all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even though we didn't sell a green headset, we didn't sell a green iPhone case, we had 120 something people that came and saw our name. And so it's brand recognition, and a lot of them, so a lot of them followed us because of that too. We got a lot of follows because of that board. Um, before the meeting ends, I want to make, I would love to hear you detail how you organize your day. <laughs> and do you, you know, designate 30 minutes Pinterest, ding, 30 minutes Facebook, ding, exactly how you organize your day? Definitely, yeah. um, I don't have set specific times, but I do visit each of these three sites I'm going over with you every single day. I'm in there every day on Pinterest. And that's all you do? is those oh is my for my job yeah no that's just a tiny bit of what i do okay <laughs> so back yeah. to how you organize your day um one of the biggest things one of my biggest functions with batters for less is uh, helping organic seo i do link building for search terms i have a spreadsheet of about 100 to 200 search terms that i work on so that's what i do i work on that um, i do social media i i set aside maybe about an hour on all social media you said you use organic SEO and you used organic Google, and that's... That's, that's not paid, so like... Oh, not paid. Yeah, it's just the natural organic. results that come. Okay. So do you have a, is there some kind of an app or toolbar where you said you go from your site and just build these pages and it links back to them? Is that a tool you use, or do you go to Pinterest to import that photo? Well, I'm going to go over that. There's two ways that you can do that, actually. Well, it's a great segue. Two, two, yeah. And I think I'm almost, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. to talk about was just when you create the board, you can go in, edit the board, and add a description. Okay, and that's always important. So I just added HTC Sensation 4G, smartphone. Okay, so that's optimizing the board itself. Do you put keywords into the description? I do. For yes. Google? Okay. Okay, so um, pinning to boards and there are ways that you can pin. So there's, um, there's a download, there, I, there's a link, a reference link, where you guys can actually download if you want a pin it button that goes onto your toolbar up there. So that wherever you are out on the web, any page that you're on, if you want to pin a picture on it, you just click the button, it pulls up the, the Pinterest window, um, you pick which photo on the page you want to pin, um, and give it, give it a description, categorize it. So you can do that, or you can upload directly on Pinterest. I believe what you're asking, right? So upload a pin, you go to add, 
upload pin, and then you can paste in the, the, the okay. actual picture. Okay. Is that an extension for Firefox, the pin button? Yes. In fact, um, in fact. What about copyright considerations? Hmm. With Pinterest? Yeah. That's come, that is a big issue. That's come up a lot. It, it came up a lot at first. I haven't seen as much about it lately. So I'm not sure if they figured that out. Do they uh, own our pictures like Facebook? Do they own our pictures that we upload like Facebook? Yeah, yeah I believe so. Um, pinning to boards, we talked about. So now here, here's the social aspect. It's um, repinning. It's called repinning, liking, and commenting. So a repin is like a share on Facebook. If you see somebody's pin that you like, you can repin it, and you can pick what board you want to pin it onto and save it basically. I, I like doing that. I have a couple of other um, people that ha or businesses that have accounts, and we kind of trade pins. Like I'll pin a couple of their products, and they'll come in like repin a couple of ours. And then like, of course, is the same as like a like button on Facebook. And then you can also comment on pins. I noticed that um, when I first started using Pinterest, I wasn't really doing, I wasn't repinning other people's pins as much. I was not commenting, I wasn't liking. And as soon as I started doing that, it started to move back. It's really important to engage people, to actually go out and be an active user and not just create boards and then expect, you know, everyone to come and like them and comment. Okay. So, um, so what we do, we, we integrate with our other, other social media platforms. So when I create a board, um, I, I share a board on Facebook or I share a pin on Facebook. Or um, I social bookmark. So I have a list of social bookmarking sites where I bookmark the boards that I created. Um, you can also add the Pinterest button to your website as well. So it's either, um, you can either add a share, uh, follow us on Pinterest or pin it which is pinning a specific page. Okay, this is a, just a small sample of links that, um, these are the type of links coming from Pinterest that we get. So this is somebody's actual user profile and their activity that they pinned us. This is coming from an actual pin itself. This is, this is a page that's a list of all of our pins, and you get links for all of this. These are other users, other users. Um, also, you'll get links for um, your actual um, board itself. That's not in here, but. Where did you find the link report? Is that your saying? Webmaster Tools. Oh. Web Pinterest? No, we, uh, Webmaster Tools, which oh. is another free tool that's provided by Google that works with Google and so the other one I highly recommend that you use if you're serious about marketing your website because it gives you uh, priceless information about where not just the pages that you're getting clicks, like not just the clicks you're getting, but they'll tell you like where your uh, pages are coming up in Google, whether or not you're getting a click. So you could, you could get a thousand impressions, you're coming up a thousand times in Google, never get a click. But, so and that gives you an opportunity. You can go, well, I'm on the second or third page, and you know, I want to work my way up to this, the first page, and you know, you can, uh, usually start translating into more clicks. So, I mean, you know, we met, somebody mentioned not, no follow links, but you know, the changing SEO game with Google and their algorithm and everything, which is all top secret. So if anybody ever tells you that they know what Google does, they're lying. Okay, because it's nobody knows, no one, um, except for them. I presume, just so you make my classes. I pretend like I know, I presume. But we actually, we use no follow links and we use follow links. In fact, what I've read is they're actually aware of your ratio. So if you should have your ideally, perfectly optimized website is gonna have some ratio, they don't tell you what that is, but a certain ratio of no follow to follow in uh, inbound links. So they're both, both important. So we really try to throw out whether, you know, we're not looking around trying to be sneaky, whether or not we're passing page or for that. We just try to you know, focus on generating good content and really giving users a reason to engage with us. We 
legitimate reason. So. And since June 1st, we've had about 175 of our, we have links to 175 pages on our website. On the so this is a small sample. And the reason that we pull these, it's, it's good, is that um, these are all deep links. They're all deep links into our website, which are about, very, very valuable. So they don't land just on our homepage. They right. land on a specific product. And I want to make uh, two notes. First, presentation is going to be posted, so this very, 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 very small text that I can't read yeah. from the back will be posted online. Secondly, you guys have about 10 minutes and a lot okay. to cover. So and there will be a lot more for Pinterest on the next presentation. Okay, so I'll go over this a little bit quicker. So the next site is Squidoo. Has anyone ever heard of Squidoo? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Really? Great. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Squidoo has, um, here's the demographics, basically, um, again, 57% there are women, so it's more women using the site. Uh, the biggest age group segment, 20%, between 35 and 45. From these websites, are you finding then the same percentage of purchasers as the demographic for the site? So. Would you, are 40% of your purchases in women or 20% men or? Um, it's roughly for us, it's, uh, we have 53% men. So it's a little bit different, you know. So it's good to f try to find the websites that mirror your demographics. And we don't track down to individual sources to figure out between men and women. It's just we don't have the time for that. And so there's, there's it's not going to necessarily mirror what you'd see as the Squidoo user for our percentage of sales from that product, we're probably going to have similar to our yeah. overall website demographic. And a big point of it is to kind of really show you that, I mean, you really should do your homework and kind of, you know, when you're looking at sites. Every time we go into, well, in any one of these channels, so if we talked about photo sharing sites, there's a hundred photo sharing sites. A lot of them you get to and they look awesome, they look great, and they have a really high page rank, but nobody uses them. And so you could put the same amount of time and effort into that website or as another one that has 20 million users. So you might as well do the 20 million users website. So you being able to kind of know what the traffic is and then what the basic demographic is, is I think where you have to, where we start and I think where we should start. Okay, so with Squidoo, um, after you create an account, um, what is this? Squidoo, it's their user-generated microsites. So you can basically build little websites, and I'll show you a couple that I've done, um, based on specific subjects. So, um, okay. One of my favorite things about Squidoo, you can go into your actual profile information, put a little description, upload an image, but then you can actually spotlight five um, other lenses of your own, um, and that will build link juice for them. What is a lens? A lens is a microsite. It's like they use the term lens, but it's actually a little web web page. Same thing. On a very specific topic. Exactly. You can put links to your Twitter, your Facebook, and then my favorite part is that you can actually link to your blog and to your website. So we have link, you know, that's a good way to build some links on your profile page. Okay, I'm going to skip over a few of the things because we kind of should have time. So I'm just going to do the basic. Um, basically, when you log in, you're going to go to lenses. Okay, I think I have 15 active lenses right now. The most popular one that I uh, created was, it's called Best iPhone 4 Case. So I'll show you what a lens looks like. But see how I built lenses for search terms. The Droid X Extended Battery, it's a whole web page on the Droid X Extended Battery. And it points to our target page for that search term. What's the benefit of having that content here rather than on batteries for less or some other sites supporting batteries for less? Um, well, the benefit is you're driving new traffic. This is a new, new audience. You're driving them to your website. The other benefit is building backlinks. Okay. That's, for me, I think that's the biggest Okay. Um, so Link building is really hard and it's getting much harder. So a lot of the stuff you used to do to influence Google's ranking was based on going out there, hiring virtual assistants, getting links, and lots of crappy websites. That does not work anymore. In fact, it can be a negative factor. Google is encouraging website webmasters to get involved, get social, be active, 
get those linked back from sites that people actually use and are sharing on. And that's where the three examples of these sites are good social sites where if you have a presence there, just the fact that you're interacting there, Google notices that. And if you do it in a very focused way, you get very specific benefit for keywords. I'm going to show you the back end and then I'll show you kind of what it looks like when you're finished with it. Do you repurpose your content from different? I usually, I write the content for the lens myself. Specific to each different site you're on? Mm -hmm. it's new. Yeah. Each mini site that I create. So um, when you go to create a lens, you, you can create the title. Um, again, optimize for keywords because that title becomes your URL for your lens. Um, Basically, Squidoo, the way that you build lenses are by modules, or I guess widgets would be another way to describe it. There are um, a few of my favorite ones you can do. There's um, just text boxes where you can just do text with the photograph. Um, let's see. Um, you can do a table of contents, a link list, an RSS feed, a guest book where people can ask questions. Um, so basically, once you set up your lens, Really, and the fun thing with Squiddy, there's so much to it, just getting in here and poking around on it, I would really suggest doing that. Because there's so much that we can't go into today that you, that you can do. Um. I go in about once a week and I add a new iPhone 4 case to this one. More, more participation you have, the better, you know, more exposure you're going to get. So a lot of these websites like Squidoo, um, you got to keep it fresh. So like it will, Squidoo will promote your lens on their website to their millions mm -hmm. of visitors if it's, if it's fresh, and if it's interesting. So you got you know, you add something and you can actually see it come back up and then as time goes on it drops back down and you know. And we'll see these huge surges in traffic to our website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all these, all these sites we do get measurable transactions from as far as so this is in this is where you're going to be actually editing a lens. You can change the title of the lens. Um, this is I always do like a text talk at the top of the photograph as an introduction. Um, I added a module for a table of contents, and this is going through. And it's really actually easy. I mean, you add a text mo the modules are over here on this side. If you can see that, you would type that you want five text modules. So you add five text modules to your lens. And you can go in and edit each one. You can add a photograph. Mm -hmm. okay. these, these, uh, each of these little articles be back to your site, to that case? Yes. Sweet. Yeah, so I have a, um, a link right here. One of the terms we're trying to compete okay, on sure. is iPhone 4 cases. It gets over 200,000 searches a month. So we have a link to our, our page there. And, and then when I did links here, I, did, I picked some cases on our site, but I picked cases on other sites. But so I just put a bunch of different kind of cool best iPhone 4 cases. Mm -hmm. So these are all widgets or modules. And um, do, the, do the photos link anywhere? Yeah, you can link the photos. And you can link them to specific URLs. And in absolutely. each of the different modules that you're adding on a weekly-ish basis, are you adding your keyword link? Yeah, you know, I try not to put too many links in each lens because if you have more than like four or five, they don't really like that very much. So. But I, I do it just to keep that lens fresh, as opposed to building new links more. Okay. Yeah. Where, does, so. where does this company get its revenue? Good question. They, what was the question? How are they getting their revenue? Squidoo? Yes. Well, um, I, I would guess member advertising. They have yeah. upgrades and ads. Yeah. Well, how can they give back some of it to a, um, a nonprofit that you can signal for oh, giving yeah, yeah, back yeah. to, and it's all from the advertising? A lot of people make money off Squidoo. They build lenses yeah. surrounding specific subjects, like um, a top 10 book list. Okay, And then they go and they add an Amazon.com widget or module. And, and they can actually pick the, those books that they just talked about, put them in the module. And if someone goes through and buys that book through Amazon, you get royalties every month for it. Oh. Right. Yeah, so a lot of people use this just as a money-making how do you keep how do you keep competitors then from going on your page and advertising? 
they keep up. How do we keep competitors from... Right, because if they're putting ads up, a competitive ad could appear on your page. That right? is, that probably is a possibility. And um, I haven't seen, you guys use Squidoo often? Nope, not often, I, no. I haven't really noticed the ads on there. You get ads up on the banner and on the sides. Okay. And it can be anything. Yeah. But again, I mean, you're not necessarily doing it as a sales portal. You're doing it more as a link building and yeah. trying to get traffic back to your site. Like three more things on Squidoo. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so there's specific tips and tricks that I want to tell you about with Squidoo, and one of them is when you're when you create a text module and you're writing a little blurb about the subject, um, you can't just copy and paste the URL in there for it to link. You have to use the HTML mm -hmm. HTML coding. So I put in there that um, you want to put your this is the URL that you want to link to, and this is the text that you want it to link to. So like making this your keyword term, the income text. That was a good idea. Again, same with um, Pinterest, being an active user, uh, going out, you can like people's lenses, um, you can share them, and then they come back and do the same for you, and comment on their lenses. So really getting out there, being active, it's going to bring more traffic to your lenses, people will like them. Um, so once you create a lens, it's a cool, it's a little mini website. You can share it on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can go to Pinterest and pin the picture from your lens. Um, and then again, social bookmark. Okay, so how to's and top 10 lists are really good lens topics. If you can come up with anything that would go with your business model. People love how to's, top 10's. So um, we get a lot of links from Squidoo. Um, here's a small sample of these are um, my actual lenses. Okay. So these are lenses. The link, the link report is definitely one of the main criteria for us putting any time and effort into mm -hmm. uh, certain websites. Mm -hmm. um, so like at some point in time, I think I remember years ago, um, you know, I started using that technique and just kind of going through my webmaster tools, internal links, and just always looking for new links that come up. And, you know, using that strategy, you'll see websites that you didn't really expect and then go, you know, I, I would think to myself, is there more I can do on that website? So I'd go to that website and look and see where that link came from and see if I can start generating more of these. Mm -hmm. One of the commonalities that, I'm sorry, um, one of the common uh, commonalities between all these websites, uh, or between these two that we showed you so far, is the fact that you're you're choosing categories, so there's multiple categories, topics, interests, again, that you can relate to, um, that you can uh, integrate it with your other social media. Um, one of the factors that I see often is when I'm looking for, um, you know, again, researching a certain keyword phrase, so uh, Panda iPhone speakers, let's say, and maybe our page maybe at the top or on the front page, and maybe on the second or third page, there will be a Squidoo lens. So if I can get my link on that page, or one like it, like in Pinterest, it's already a board, if I could get something, get my pin on that board somehow, now I have a link on that page pointing to my website. Mm -hmm. So I'll often just type in search phrases that I'm targeting, and I'll just start looking through the search results, looking for opportunities where I know we can get free links. So that would be Pinterest or Squidoo, or what we did, and Kelly didn't have a chance to talk about. Well, I can in one, in one minute. Yahoo if answers. you just give me one minute, I can just do give you the overview of Yahoo Answers. Okay. Yahoo Answers, you can create an account or you can use your existing Yahoo ID. You go to answers.yahoo.com. There's a search box. You can search for any term related to whatever you want to answer. And I suggest answering questions that obviously have to do with your business. So you can put <laughs> links in there. It's all about links. So um, you do the search. You go, this is important, left-hand side, change it to open questions, because you're going to come up with a bunch of questions that might have been closed, you can't answer them. So, you go in, you find a question you want to answer, like for me, um, my cell phone battery, it's not, it won't turn on, and I don't know, is it my battery, it, my, my phone won't turn on, it's flickering. So I go in and I'd say, well, if your battery's over this amount of age, then it's probably your battery. You can get them, and then I'll kind of at the very end say, you can get them, you know, online here, and I'll put a link. 
Um, one thing to know about Yahoo Answers is I would get started if you can because there's different levels. Of, you get points for answering questions. Um, I think after you answer about 15 or 20 questions, you get to a level where you can then start putting links in your answer. They won't let you link right away. You have to show that you're involved. So we get a lot of links from Yahoo Answers, and not only do we get a lot of links, we get conversions as well, more than Pinterest or yeah, we get the most order probably any of our social sites is from Yahoo mm -hmm. Answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. so legitimate questions and answers. Same thing, categories. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to really open your mind and just try to think of different ways that you can apply your business, whether it be a product or a service in this case. This is really good for services. For anyone that wants to become an expert in their field, this is a really great way to do it. And it's free. It takes some time, but within, I think it's like 30 days, you can earn enough points that you can start, start building, putting links mm -hmm. into your answers. Mm -hmm. um, so, and also, you know, uh, again, just participating. Just participating is not, you know, answering those questions with good, legitimate answers. Don't spam, don't try to get your link in there. You know, don't stretch it too far to try to squeeze your link in there, but try to make it legitimate. And that participation and everything, that gives you a chance to say, hey, mm -hmm. I'm also over here on LinkedIn. Sometimes so it gives I, you a way to integrate. Yeah, sometimes I answer questions that have nothing to do with batteries whatsoever, just yeah. random questions. Just because I, I <coughs> don't want to just seem like I'm just there always to just press batteries, so I do that as well. Um, so basically, I would definitely suggest going on the off of the answers. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I don't. I don't personally ever ask questions because it deducts points when you ask questions. <laughs> yeah, you lose two points. Two points. So um, the last thing that I want to talk about is how you can integrate these three sites together. So um, you can pin a lens. So you create a lens and then you can pin your lens. You can answer a Yahoo question using a link from the Pinterest board that you made or a Squidoo lens that you made. Um, and then you can write a Squidoo lens about one of your Pinterest boards, kind of like bringing them together. So kind of integrating those three. So this last page, um, basically I put together some resources for you guys for each site. Um, for Pinterest, I have the link to register. I have the user guide. I have a couple of other uh, social photo sharing sites listed, and I have the same thing here. And then down here, there's this is these are some tools you can use to research traffic and demographics. So Alexa.com is researching the amount of traffic that a website gets. Quantcast.com will give you free demographic information on age and gender. So. Questions? <laughs> yeah, we covered a lot. We just scratched the surface of the surface of the surface. So there's a lot more we can talk about. And cram as much as we could into an hour. Um, yeah, I, I had a quick question. Sure. So if demographically your market that you're you're targeting for business uh, doesn't quite match, uh, say, the social media marketing interests that you you've chosen. Squidoo and Pinterest. Um, your primary focus is links, but link building in those social media marketing. Focus. Right, right. Okay. But you, there's ways that you could you could make it relevant that you wouldn't even think. But so economically, like what, though, it's not really matching your demographic business target. Yeah, I think correct? it's overall again trying to trying to trying to bring in 58 percent of our traffic from multiple places. Um, it, you know, they, so we have to be, we have to spread out. Another part, though, is that because of the presentation and because we want to kind of appeal to more general audiences. But like for us, like she mentioned on like uh, Yahoo Answers, and I didn't even see what the demographic was on the Yahoo Answers or not, but we see a significant amount of transactions coming from that. So whether we're, do you have a slide with the demo for that? Yeah, so whether we're focusing on the demographics or not, I mean, it's all, you know, there's a big part about participating. There's also a part in the, you know, during certain seasons where we see a huge increase in female shoppers. So holiday season in particular. So, you know, we're going to see, uh, you know, there's a lot more exposure. So like on the St. Patrick's Day board, for instance, we put a green Bluetooth headset. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen a green Bluetooth headset anywhere else other than on that pin. So, you know what I mean? So somebody could say, oh, that's what I'm looking for. You know? You have a zombie uh, one. <laughs> but I think it really comes down to the further answer your question. Lens, Nico. And as the boss, I'm all over everybody on this. It's, 
you've got to be really careful. You don't want to spend all your time in any one of these. You want to do a good job. You want to, you know, she said she spends about an hour a day on social, and you know that's for a company our size. And she does. She doesn't do the same thing every day. She no. checks out on some of her sites every day. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, if she, she on sites some days. Article yeah. directories. Mm -hmm. So you really got to kind of, you know, juggle it, balance uh, your time well. Great. So first of all, thank you guys. Yeah. 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 Cards are both over there on the counter. Feel free. Um, I know I'm open to any if anybody wants to contact me if you have any uh, questions. Tony Yorba, Tony at batteriesforless.com. Mm -hmm. Kelly, K E L L I. Yes. Phoenix, Kelly. I knew what it was. I'm just pausing for dramatic effect. Uh, we got five minutes. Uh, we have Batteries for Less sponsoring again today. So, uh, Tony, if you want to explain some of the things you brought over. Okay. Uh, also, uh, this is a member supported group. We have a donation jar that should it's be around. In the box. Huh? Donation box. I'd like to pass that around. If you haven't contributed, I encourage you to because it pays for coffee snacks. Plus, we want to start gathering a little bit more now so we can have a little bit better of a holiday party, which will be in December, most likely at the Stonehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, some of our products, again, that you, know, you were here last time, sorry, some of these, I don't think they're the same, but again, trying to get into other new uh, products other than just cell phone batteries. So with cell phones, those staying in cell phones, we have some really cool little gadgets we'd like to give away. One is a universal USB charging kit. Yes. So it's a couple different things. One that plugs into the wall, one that plugs into your cigarette lighter, and then you can plug your USB cable into it. And we'd like to give this away right now. To, to Cal Ryan. <laughs> Cal and you graduate. Uh, 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 And then we have, these are both the same, these are um, small little external battery packs that give you almost a full charge if you were to drain down your iPhone or your Droid and you were caught up. It's good to keep in your pocket or keep in your purse. Back of battery, it's a portable ba charger. Yeah, it's a portable charger. So this is a battery itself. You charge this up and keep it with you when you, when you need it. You plug it into your phone and it'll just charge your phone up for you. Um, so we have one for an iPhone and we have one for a Droid. So we're just going to give them away. And if we, Makes a great gift. James Bell. James gets the iPhone. You can have it. Swap it out. Swap it out. We know we got one for one there. Yeah, the Tony. Lima. Lima. iPhone? iPhone? Uh, I have an Evo, but... That's the droid. <laughs> or you can get the mic, it's the micro. It's, right? well, I, did, oh, I just gave away the, the micro. micro. What we can do also come is we can swap that out if you want to come by our offices. <laughs> yeah, come in and I'll... Swap that. Yeah, come yeah. by the store and we'll, oh, we'll I'll give you the micro. Pending Tony's thank you. Uh, permission on that. Uh, yeah, we, we are in stock, if not, we'll replace it with no one. I think we'll replace it with Okay, so we're located up in Whispering Pines, same parking lot as the Nevada County Farm Supply across the street from Peaceful Valley. 1020 Whispering Pines, suite F is in Frank, batteriesforless.com. Thank you guys again for coming here. Over there, if you grab a flyer or the coupon code on the flyer, it's good for 20% off anything in our store if you order online. Okay? So uh, feel free to grab one of those flyers. Coupon code's good through the end of the year. And we don't have to be out of here right at 12.30, so feel free to hang out. There's still some cookies and perhaps some lukewarm coffee left. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for showing up. And next month is Brenda Horton really getting into even more detail on Pinterest. As you can see, we're trying to keep up on the trends that this is a massively growing social network, and it's being used by us very effectively. So more for you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.